Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I don't have a specific task that I need to tackle, but just a bunch of little things, so this is going to be a little bit different than your normal instructional video, but I hope you guys enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is, when I put the auto power roll bar in, I got an uh, inch and a half bolts, and on hard turns, it hits the tire. It's not really deep, it's just cut all the way around I only use these tires for track so that's the first thing we're gonna work on so I already have the car jacked up and back passenger wheel removed you can see right in here is where the bolts are going down and inside the wheel well this is where they're coming out they stick out a pretty good amount so what I'm gonna do is take them off one by one and flip them around we fix those bolts hopefully we have enough clearance so they don't hit the tire next time we go to the track or really just drive this car hard so next up I've been noticing there's been some water on this side I don't know if you can see the ring light color of the paint well, water's been accumulating right there and I believe it's from this tail light gasket uh, sprayed the car down with a hose and I can see some water leaking down right here so we're going to remove the tail light a bunch of eight millimeter bolts and I want to do some arts and crafts right, so in a previous video i showed you i made this tail like gasket but i think from just taking it on and off on and off when i was doing all the rivets on the back of the car it just got smashed down so basically i'm going to be using this for a template again so what i have is markers some foam you could pick up from Walmart. I think this is like 10 bucks, and so far I got four tail light gaskets out of it. So this one is three plies. I'm gonna make this one four. Uh, some spray adhesive and a razor blade. traced out I'm just basically going to cut them all out that we have all the pieces cut out we're going to glue them together this is just some permatex headliner and carpet adhesive now that this is all together i'm just going to let it dry for a couple minutes and then on the insides i'm just going to trim around so they're all a little bit more even and i'm going to use a drill bit to poke the holes i'm going to use this one is my template for the holes right here. Pop drill bits through that, and we should be good to go. All right, so the new tail light gaskets back in. It's in pretty tight. Here's one of the other ones that I made before. This one doesn't leak on this side, so I didn't really want to mess with it. So, next project up for today is this X bar. This thing rattles like crazy when I'm driving and it pretty much makes me nuts. So, we have that one there. This one is kind of loose. This one's good. This is good. This one kind of rattles. So basically, I'm gonna take these bolts off up here and I'm gonna have to force a washer in between uh, the bracket and the actual threaded part that comes out on the bolt so I'm gonna work on this top one first so I think I fixed the rattling hopefully I'll put a washer on this side and this side same with the other side so this bar doesn't move at all anymore I'll put a washer down here this one doesn't move anymore and I also put a washer right here on this one this one moves a little bit 
but I don't think it's going to rattle. So we'll see what happens. If not, I have to climb back here and uh, fix that. So next up, I have to pull out the driver's side seat because if you can see down here, this bolt is hitting the exhaust tunnel. So I'm going to pull that out and probably just cut it shorter with the grinder. So the seat's out, shave down the bolt so it's pretty flush with the nut. Gained a little bit of clearance. Hanging out with the dog. Say hi, Amir. So over here on the inside of the car, I took the foot plate up and vacuumed all this up. Uh, it was just a bunch of the plastic from when I shaved the uh, dash holes open to fit these gauges in. This was pretty dirty. So I'm gonna install this foot plate now, put the seat back in. Uh, vacuum up this side first and then we'll move on to the other side. The reason that passenger seat is out is because it just felt loose. No one ever sits in this seat probably once since I put it in but these bolts are coming loose so I just put some Loctite on them and tighten them up I really don't like this style seat bracket I like the PCI one that I have on the driver's side much better even though it's non-adjustable but this is just in case I go to a track day and an instructor needs to get in this car so I got all those tightened up and I'm about to put it back in the car now. So the seats are all back in. Everything's all tightened up. No more wobbles. So now we're going to move on to where we hook the gauges up. So this one right here is the water temp. And then I don't have the oil pressure and the oil temp hooked up right now. I'm about to hook those back up. But uh, I think the sensor and the oil temperature gauge went up because I swapped the oil temperature gauge with the signal from the water temp gauge and it read the same exact uh, temperature. So it's not a problem with the gauge. The sensor itself is probably bad because it was old. So right now I'm going to hook those back up and I'm going to, where the connectors are, I'm going to use some shrink wrap and put that over it just to make it uh, tighter. I'm going to bundle up all these wires and make it look a little bit better so it's not all over the place. And I'm going to put the carbon fiber radio block off back on. Alright, so those wires are all cleaned up. Uh, carbon fiber radio block off back on. Tear is starting to look complete again. I'm not like a total mess, even though all this stuff needs to be wiped down. So next up, we're going to change the uh, front sway bar end links. This is a part number. I couldn't believe how cheap these were They're for like four bucks brand new and they have lifetime warranty so you could just keep switching them out so if you look in here um, they're sitting right here if you get uh, pretty close up they're all cracked so basically to remove these you want to uh, put a 10 or a 12 up here and then hold a 12 here loosen this side up and then from the bottom same thing right down in here I'm going to show you, get these off real quick and I'll show you how to put them on. So I got the old one off. You can see how much the bushing smashed down compared to the old one. I'm kind of disappointed in myself for letting it slide for so long considering how cheap these are. So basically, you want to put a washer on each side and a bushing. That's going to go right in here. So I'm going to set this into place so that I would pry the sway bar up to get it in. So I'll show you that in one second. All right, so that sits in there just like that. So basically, take the pry bar and just stick it right here on the flat piece of the control arm and just pry it up and then you'll be able to get it without needing a jack or anything for the suspension. So next you just take a bushing again on the top side and then the washer and then one bottom bushing washer and then nut and then tighten it all up. All right, you can see it's on now. Doesn't have to be uh, super tight, just about one or two threads sticking out past the bolt. So that was pretty easy to do. Probably gonna be a worthwhile upgrade 
So I'm gonna do the other side real quick. All right guys, so it's the next day. I uh, also picked up this Honda S300 V3. The reason that this wasn't in the video yesterday is because I was waiting for this cord to come in the mail. I uh, did pick this up second hand. Uh, really don't know too much about uh, programming this Honda, but I did end up loading a base map. So I'm going to show you that right now. Alright, so hopefully you guys can see it's super bright outside. I had to put a blanket across the window just in order for me to see the screen. So basically when you get this Honda to put in, you're going to go to New Calibration. And then it'll bring up this little menu. I just went down to um, the P74 stock LS ECU and once you select that you just hit OK and that'll bring up that base map so you want to click the key two times forward but once you do that you're going to hit the upload button and then it'll send the information to the computer I have been messing with mine a little bit so I kind of have it set up like I like it because I had to disable the electronic load detector and a couple other things but once you have uh, the base map uploaded if you click on display you can set up your display this is mine I'll start the car lightning bolt now you have live reads since I uploaded this Honda the car runs a lot better before the idle used to surge up and down to about 2,000 2,500 until the car was all the way warmed up but since I uploaded this base map and swapped the ECUs it the car runs a lot better it doesn't surge at all anymore so I don't know if that was a problem with the ECU or not um, I don't know much about the Honda. I'm still learning it. I'm also going to download the Honda app that's free. And then they have another one that's like six bucks where you can do like track maps and stuff. So I'm going to test those out and see how those go. I have a track day coming up in about two weeks. So next video is probably going to be like a track prep video and what kind of stuff that you should bring with you. Um, because I'm definitely not trying to get stranded like I did last time because I drove there it's like two and a half hours I uh, tracked all day and then it's a two and a half hour drive home I made it about an hour and a half on the way back and the distributor just went out so it was like four hundred and something dollars to get the car towed home so I definitely don't want that to happen again but until uh, next time like comment subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one